Hey, Happy New Year! How are you? I've not seen you for ages. Thank you to my wonderful friends who have nagged me into getting back into my videos. Ray, you know who you are. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Lucy too. Right then, so um, I'm relaunching the channel because I've neglected you all for many months now because I get completely distracted by life. Um, I'm going to commit to you to make more videos this year, at least two a month. So uh, fingers crossed that goes well. Right. So it's January. It's January the 1st. And you can probably tell it's a bit gloomy. It's pouring with rain here. Um, I've kind of lost my sojo lately. I'm sure you might have as well because Christmas takes over, doesn't it? We have too many mince pies and one too many Proseccos and sewing clothes is not really at the top of my priority list at the moment, especially not, you know, when you feel a bit sluggish after all the festivities. So one thing I did learn over Christmas was that you look at all the gifts that are exchanged and it's really kind of people, it's really lovely, but it does go through me the amount of money that's been spent. So one of my New Year's resolutions is to make more gifts this year. And as a quick and easy way to get back into my sewing, I'm gonna start with a gift. So before I do that, I should tell you what I've worn. So I've only sewn one thing, one thing since the last time that I saw you. And that's this. Uh, this is another one of those, let me get the number right, a new look 6374. And it's one of those tunic tops, which is just the job um, for when you've overindulged and you just wanna throw it on with a pair of leggings, which is what I do frequently. Um, the cuffs are really nice, three quarter length, hide all the wobbly bits. <laughs> um, the, the top is quite low, I've had to wear a vest with this. So when you make yours, if you do it, uh, you can shorten the length of this placket on the front. Um, I've This is my third one I've made now, so this is kind of a medium length um, V. It could do with being a bit shorter still. So there's a top tip for you if you make it. I'll pop a link to the pattern below if you want to have a, a nosy. Right then, so the first thing I'm gonna make this year is some bunting. I think I promised it you in the last video. I was fully intending to do it in the middle of summer because it's a kind of lovely summery gift, isn't it? But I thought, no, I'm gonna do it in January because the reason is I've got lots of fabric scraps to use up. I've got several girlfriends' birthdays coming up this quarter. Everybody likes bunting, don't they? It's a great gift to decorate a garden or a conservatory or a, uh, a little girl's bedroom, or really just to make, some of you make and sell at craft fairs and it's really handy for that too. It's quite a quick sew um, and I'm gonna take you through it now. Now, all you need apart from your usual sewing kit and your sewing machine, you can do it by hand though, um, is some squares, yes, squares of fabric. And also I've bought some proper bunting tape this time. Now I have made several sets of bunting and I've used uh, bias binding, the pre-folded one that you can buy on a roll or buy per metre. Um, that's okay, but I like to put mine on the outside of my house. So when we have um, like a jubilee or something patriotic, I bring out the red, white and blue bunting and I throw it onto the outside of the house. If I've got a picture, I'll pop it here for you so you can have a look. Now, what prompted me to redo this, because I've made this twice, was to do larger size bunting flags than I've done already. Because if you put in it on a house, the scale needs to be a bit bigger, doesn't it? So think about that. Now the bunting tape is just a natural one. I got this colour because it goes with everything, doesn't it? And you can buy this on Amazon. I'll pop a link below if you want to buy some yourself. There's probably a lot more than I need here, but it's surprising how much you do need, especially if you're thinking about decorating a garden wall or the full width of a bedroom or wherever it's gonna go. So have a think about that. First of all, you need to think about fabric. Now you can make bunting from anything. Um, I'd steer clear of jersey really, unless you really want to, unless it's a particularly thick one. 
um, just because it might droop and bunting gets wet as well and you've got to think about that if it's outside anyway. So I've got some curtain fabric here which it's just as I bought this ages ago for a project that I I did use actually I covered um, some stools with it some vintage stools and it's such a beautiful fabric this is a like a canvas cotton I don't sell um, furnishing fabric but if you've got anything like this in your stash that would work quite well it does tend to fray but that doesn't matter so much because your seam will be on the inside or um, other great fabrics to use are pure cottons, cotton lawn, um, but you know if you've got something cotton in, in your stash where you think oh, I'm not really going to make that into a shirt or a blouse, it's a little bit too stiff, it's perfect for bunting. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut out squares of this. Now think about the size that you need. Do you want little cutesy bunting to go over a little girl's bed? Do you want something large to go on the outside of your house? Do you want something medium size to go next to your outside dining area? Which uh, one of my friends loves hers that I made for her outside area. And it really makes an outside space quite summery and it can tie in. So I made her a matching tablecloth for her um, garden set. And she has a parasol that goes through the center of the table and because you're sewing for somebody it's great so i cut out a hole and i also bound that hole so that she's got a perfectly smooth uh, cloth that won't blow away either because you've got the parasol through so you can match things like that that would be a really nice gift set for somebody uh, cloth and bunting to match and then if you're really keen you could also make some napkins too so let's crack on Okay, we've got our first square cut out. Now I've chosen to make a square 10 inches by 10 inches. I think that gives a kind of nice size. You can choose whichever you like. If you want to play around with how that looks, cut out a piece of paper first and then see. Now what we're going to do is, oh, by the way, accuracy on squares. You do need to be fairly accurate. It's probably perfect if you have a rotary cutter and a mat. Don't panic if you don't. Um, I have a rotary cutter somewhere. Could I find it this morning? <laughs> no. So I've just drawn, literally drawn lines. And you only really need to get one perfect. Because what I do, I'm a bit lazy, quilters look away now, is you only need to really accurately measure one. And then I just use this. I usually turn it upside down, put it on top of the print side up, and you've got a perfect template to cut out the rest. Um, I do cut mine out one at a time, but you could, if you've got thinner fabric, you could use a multi-layer approach and cut them all out at once. So there we go, first square done. Now the first stage is, once you've cut out your square and you've maybe pressed it if it needs pressing, we're going to take opposite corners and fold them to make a triangle, like so. And this is right sides together, so the wrong sides will be on the outside, as you can see here. Pin that one edge and stitch. Now, when I sew mine, I start at the, the top end and I head down towards the point. And that way you can get a really sharp point if you're in control of where it finishes, rather than trying to start off with that end. You'll see what I mean when I finish. Okay, so here we go. Let's start. I've already locked it in place, the stitch. So if you go right to the very end, That's it, and then we're going to back stitch and then finish off there. And that's what the pointy corner should look like. So we've got our one edge stitched like so. Now what we're going to do is to open out the flag so that we move the seam down the centre of this triangular piece. I'll show you again. 
So that's what we've sewn. We're going to open out like so and make sure that that seam runs right down the centre of that triangle and the best way to do that is to press it. So let's do that now. Before we do, <laughs> snip off the excess on the end so that when you turn out the flag it becomes a little bit more uh, pointy and less bulky. So just snip off a bit, don't get too close to your stitching or it will come undone. So I'll show you again, open it out, still inside out, press down the seam with an iron and then when that's pressed we're going to turn it inside out so the right way out I should say and then you can see a flag forming. Now to get the pointy bit perfect I use a bone folder which I have here I use this for card making. Um, so you pop this inside. It's got a reasonably, it's not made of bone. It's a plastic, uh, what they used to be. Um, and then we pop that out like so. And that gets most of the point out. So, and then to finish it off, just take a pin and gradually poke out the last little bit. Be careful there because it depends on the weave of the fabric that you're sewing. It can fray a little bit if you poke it too much. So it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going on a wall, isn't it? And there you have almost a finished flag. So you've got the seam down the centre. You've got a nice point here. And then we've got this little bit of leftover fabric. Now what we're going to do with that is tuck it inside. So you see, it saves all that hassle about cutting out triangles and you've got a nice, neat triangular flag. Now, I should have said at the beginning, before you actually <laughs> sew all these flags out, well, if you're a perfectionist, you could measure exactly the amount of flags you need and exactly the amount of tape. So if you're sewing for a specific thing, i.e a wall or somewhere exact then you really do need to do the maths first. I tend to make and finish when it's done because you can always alter the drape of the actual flag strip or um, when it's finished it's finished so it depends if you want something really specifically um, in length. So what we need to do is once you've got your flag sewn and pressed and the little tops tucked in You'll notice these fray bits on the top. Don't worry about those because they're going to be encased in the actual tape. Um, if they're too long, like some of these, I know the canvas does tend to have these long little threads, then just snip those off before you start sewing. So what we need to do is work out the space between flags. So this is kind of just trial and error. Um, I think they, there is a kind of optimum gap between flags but it depends on how wide these are. There's probably some kind of pie theory for it. I don't know what it is, I tend to go by eye. But just make sure the gap is the same throughout the whole of the bunting flag. So the easiest way to do that is to put little marks on here first. Don't forget to leave yourself an end. Now, I when I use bunting for the house, I uh, trap one end inside an upstairs window. So I need a reasonably long strip here. Don't forget, you can always snip this off. You can't add to it. So leave yourself a long end, probably about that, that much for me, and then start your first flag. And then once you've done that, you need to work out the gap between the next one and make sure that's the same all the way through so that they're consistent. And you could pin them first and lay them out and just have a play around with it and see what works for you. And then you can stand back and hold it up and see if that's right. So let's do that now. So I've worked out that half a metre before I start my first flag is the right gap for me. So that's 50 centimetres and then what we're going to do is to pin the first flag on. Now before you do that 
if you want to press in half this tape, because it's just a single tape, no folds like a bias binding, then that will help you get, line it up properly. So you might not get it kind of skew with. Um, so it will make life easier if you press it first. Or you can just go for it and see, as long as you carefully pin it, you may not need to take that step. Now, don't forget there is a wrong side to these flags because the seam, so make sure they're all facing the same way. So take the flag, take the start point, and then just pin it and fold over that tape and then you should have those in place. Um, because they're quite sharp, I wouldn't do a whole row of them with pins and then start sewing. I'd maybe do one at a time. It's up to you. I'm a bit clumsy, so <laughs> if you don't want pins sticking in your tights as you, you're going along, then I'd do one at a time and then it's safer. And you can keep track of those pins as well. So the first one's pinned. We now need to sew it. Before we do that, you will need to fold in half the bunting tape all the way down and you could probably do that by eye if you're not that confident then do pin it I'd probably be inclined to uh, to to blag it and to just fold and sew as I go but I've been sewing for a while so if you're not too confident you could use clips or you could use pins to do to do that stage because don't forget that tape is going to be folded all the way down so it will look much neater if you start as you go on there. So I've pinned on a couple just to show you. I've worked out the gap for me is 30 centimetres. And I always like um, choosing those kind of measurements because you could just use a simple ruler um, and then you could just measure it each time or mark it with a pen um, or whatever way you find easiest to, to make that gap the same each time. Be very careful not to twist uh, your tape otherwise it will uh, spoil the look of the whole thing and you don't want to be unpicking these. So just um, just pin and double check and double check again before you start sewing. And then you sew all the way to the end and then ta-da! That's what it should look like. And don't forget to fold the last little bit and make that the same length is the other end. If you're really fuzzy, you could fold the ends in as well and make them super neat, stop them fraying, if, especially if they're going outside. And that is the easiest way I've made bunting. Aren't they pretty? I really love these. They're great for gifts. So good luck with yours. If you have a go, let me know. I know plenty of you are very skilled <laughs> in this type of sewing, but I thought I'd kick the new year off with something easy and something just to get you back into it. Um, and it's a great way of using up your scraps. So good luck. So that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you for bearing with me while I've had a little break from YouTube, but I will see you next time with another fantastic gift. Talk to you then. Bye for now.